I'm all ready. Me too. What's with all the big jackets? Because where we're going has lots of ice. Iceland's not covered in ice, that's Greenland. But those coats will come in handy because it does get cold, especially at the airports. Are you ready, ready to go to Iceland? Yeah. Iceland was founded by the Vikings. The Scandinavians were the first to settle in Iceland in 870. Later, Iceland was ruled also by the Norwegians and the Danes. Iceland became independent from the Kingdom of Denmark in 1918 and is a republic since 1944. The entire country of Iceland holds only a population of just over 300,000. The small population makes a largely rural country and a capital city which feels like a really big small town. 60% of the, of the Icelandic population lives in Reykjavik. Icelandic is the official language of Iceland. The main foreign languages spoken in Iceland are English, Danish, Norwegian, Swedish, and French. Studying French and Danish or Scandinavian languages is mandatory for students in compulsory schools. Everyone in Iceland is on a first name basis, as there are no surnames or family names. Most Icelanders use a traditional Nordic naming system, which includes a last name that is a combination of their father's or mother's first name, the addition of the ending daughter or daughter, or son, son. Most recently, Icelanders are now identifying as the son or daughter of their mothers rather than their father. For example, a man called Haraldur Magunson and his wife Helga Jonsdottir might have a son whose final name would then be Haraldson and a daughter whose final name would be Haraldsdottir. Logical enough, but the naming system sometimes raises eyebrows at passport control and hotel reception desks when Icelanders travel abroad. The Icelandic phrase, Fataredas, is so frequently used, it has become described as the country's motto. It can be translated to, it will all work out okay. Life can often be difficult in this barren, harsh country, and over time, Icelanders have developed a mentality which can sometimes be seen as a bit carefree. When faced with difficulties, Icelanders always maintain a belief that things will work out in the end. No matter how big the problem is, a solution will always present itself. The Icelandic diet has not changed much from the Viking Age, but as time progressed, the chefs have become more creative with traditional dishes. The majority of the food you find is seafood based, and with the Arctic water surrounding the area, the fish are very fresh. One of the most popular and quick dishes is a hot dog. These hot dogs are made with lamb, but the way Iceland stands apart from other hot dogs are the sauces. To be a true Icelandic foodie, you have to have your hot dog served with everything on it. Ketchup, sweet brown mustard, raw onions, fried onion, and a special kind of sauce made with mayonnaise and ranch. This is smoked Icelandic lamb. It is said to be very delicious, and some say because of how the sheep are farmed, which is quite old-fashioned. They are free to roam around in the wilderness. This saltfish dish has been dried and salted. It has a history in Scandinavia of more than 500 years and used to be a major export before refrigeration was a thing. This flatfish has a very long tail. The terrible thing about this fish is the smell. It is boiled and traditionally served at a party the day before Christmas Eve. The smell is overpowering and is said to remain on your clothes for a very long time. However, if you break the smell, it has a very acquired taste. Along with things like whale, puffin, dried fi and dried fish, visitors can also try fermented shark and sheep's head. Icelandic people do celebrate Christian holidays like Easter and Christmas. Iceland has some other unique holidays and traditions they celebrate throughout the year. Iceland has not one but 13 Santas. The Olads, as the residents call them, are descended from trolls and live in the mountains. Every year, 13 days before Christmas, Icelandic children put their shoe in the window before going to bed. Once they wake up, each day Santa Claus has given them some little treat in the shoe. Often it is a pack of gum, fruit, chocolate, or other small gifts. The 6th of January is celebrated at the last day of Christmas. The occasion is marked by various fireworks displays and bonfires. 
The tradition of culinary excess during winter continues with this tradition, which literally means Monday, which occurs two days before Lent and symbolizes the feast before the fast. Bakeries and home chefs prepare sweet cream puffs filled with cream and jam and drizzled with chocolate. In January and February, during the Nordic week of Tori, Icelanders feast as a tribute to the old culture. Even in pre-Christian times, Torblot feast was celebrated in honor of Thor, the Nordic god of thunder. After Icelanders converted to Christian Christianity, the tradition got lost, but in the 19th century, it caught the interest of the Icelandic nation once again. This holiday is dedicated to Iceland's boatsmen and is celebrated on the first Sunday in June. It is it's celebrated with displays of fish and fun games for the kids in most communities around the country. Over half of Icelanders believe that in elves and that they live in rock areas of Iceland, possessing magical powers. There's even an elf school where you can learn about their homes, and for tourists of the country, you can actually take half-day classes to learn about elves, trolls, and fairies. It is believed that the elf population is around 32,000, and said that they lead lives similar to humans. They keep livestock, cut hay, row fishing boats, pick berries, and go to church on Sundays. Elves, also known as hidden people, are known to be extremely protective of their homes and will cause great harm to those who disturb them. In fact, countless episodes that reflect the fiercely territorial elf in nature have been thoroughly documented, and building projects in Iceland are frequently altered to avoid causing damage to en enchanted rocks and cliffs in which hidden people have made their home. The most recent incident occurred in 2015 when a new road was to be laid through an enchanted spot in the lava field outside of Reykjavik. After many failed attempts, where heavy machinery had continually broken down for no apparent reason, and numerous workers had suffered freak accidents, the construction company was forced to move the road so that it would bypass the elven community completely. Icelanders believe that there are trolls living inside of caves, and if you keep to yourself, they won't harm you. Trolls make up a huge part of the Icelandic folklore, and in some ways, you can almost see images of trolls throughout the landscapes as if they formed the countryside themselves. Like elves, trolls get angry when one does them harm, but one can expect to be richly rewarded when helping a troll in need. Trolls are not seen as beautiful and appealing as elves, but they are just as capable of extraordinary magic feasts, and are known to cast terrible spells and enchantments. However, due to their low intelligence compared to elves, humans can usually free themselves of their enchantments quite easily. Tingvalir Park, which means Parliament Plains, holds its deepest historical roots. Dating back to 930, tribes would gather every year at Parliament Rock, up until 1798, giving this area a great pride for, its, for Icelanders. It is here as well, at the islands at the top of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge tectonic plate boundaries. It is said that one day, the island could literally cut in half. The geographical significance part of, Thing of Tingvalir is due to the fact that this is one of the of only two places in the entire world where you can see two of Earth's tectonic plates meeting above the Earth's surface. The other is in Africa. The North American and Eurasian plates jut out of the ground here in Team Valir, moving apart roughly two centimeters per year. Many scuba divers come to the park to witness the beauty in some of the clearest waters on Earth. The Arctic fox is the only native mammal. Reindeer live in the wild in East Iceland, but were only imported in the 18th century. Marine mammals are also found in abundance along the coasts, especially minko whale, humpback whale, fin whale, and several species of seals. Some whale watching tours operators claim 98% success rates for sightings. You also find animals like cows, sheep, and sheepdogs throughout the countryside most with close to the original descendants from the Viking Ages. The Icelandic horse is the oldest, rarest, and purest of breeds that have a direct tie to the Vikings. The Icelandic horse is the only horse that has five gates. These pony-sized horses provide some of the smoothest rides of horses. The flying pace is the only gate famous with the Icelandic horse where the legs on each side move in unison. It's so smooth that you can almost enjoy a cup of tea as your horse gants away. 
There are more than 125 volcanic mountains in the country, a handful of which are still very active, and another handful that could easily awaken and become active as the country changes and grows. There's a famous one in 2010 that not only caused disruption to air travel, but also to all the news anchors who could not pronounce the volcano's name. For example, Eifiaco. I mean, the news anchors couldn't do it either. Because the whole country is essentially alive with volcanic activity, the nation harnesses hydro and geothermal energy to power more than 80% of the country. Very few fossil fuels are burned here. There are even some hydrogen buses driving around Reykjavik. And most homes are heated using geothermal water that's pumped up from beneath cities and towns. Mosquitoes do not exist in Iceland. There are no McDonald's anywhere in Iceland. Oh man! Icelandic telephone directories list Icelanders by first name, alphabetically. Iceland was one of the last places to be settled by humans. In Iceland, owning a pet snake, lizard, or turtle is against the law. What? There is no railway system of any sort in Iceland.